impressions. So Vizio M series TV, this is a 2017 model year 55 inch television. Now we've had the, this TV in our home now for about a month and a half and we've really gotten used to it and you know use it on a daily basis now. So uh, overall there's a lot of pros on this TV with very few cons. Uh, the pricing was great on this TV. We compared it to Sony, Samsung, and all the big players in the game and we already had a Vizio M series TV that's really been great to us for the past two, three years, or three, four years rather. And we figured we'd give Vizio another try with the same TV. So we are, I guess, comeback customers, but that's not to say I'm just a Vizio fan fanatic or anything. I just like to buy what works well and offers a great value. And this has really worked well for us. So this is actually my second time recording this review video. The first one was brought down real quick on YouTube just because of copyright notices. I used a uh, copy of the Grand Tour off Amazon to show you guys the 4K quality, and YouTube wasn't too big of a fan of that. So I'm using some non-copyright material of just a YouTube video of some GoPro footage in 4K. Now I've already had this buffered beforehand so you guys could see really what this looks like. And I'm having some trouble getting this to come through right. Uh, the, the home looks yellow although it's not and the TV is looking gray even though it's not. So I'm really hoping this, once I press play here, the, that my phone's actually able to get this video quality in place. This is being recorded with a Samsung Galaxy S8 in auto mode. So I tried Pro, nothing's really going through. So Anyhow, I'll let you guys take a look at the television here. Again, video quality looks great. This is HDR uh, enabled television, so you have those nice solid, solid blacks along the top with the whites and not having a gray in between there. So it's able to really get that HDR, that high dynamic range, just fine. So uh, if you guys have any questions on this, just leave me a comment below and I'll be happy to get back to you. And it's going to fit this to the screen and hopefully everything comes through uh, just kosher. Showing you some viewing angles here. So as you can see, the video quality here is is really great, and it's not even really coming through just perfect uh, to the t to the phone rather. Excuse me versus what I'm seeing in real life. So in video quality here, this TV really, in my opinion, gets an eight and a half out of 10. You know, OLED TVs and all that are obviously better, but this came in, I think at 699. There's a big difference between 699 and $2,500. We don't really watch that much TV. So for us, this was a better value. Um, so I, the one thing that we really do see as a kind of a, a funky flaw with this television is the way the smart TV is enabled with it. So we'll get to that in a sec, but I'll kind of give you the remote to kind of start with this. Very kind of a plain Jane remote. It doesn't have the Samsung options of, you know, having it follow the, you know, like a like a mouse with your remote basically. But you have your apps along the top. You have Voodoo, Netflix, Amazon, Zumo, and Crackle, and iHeartRadio. This is not a mouse pad. This is simple up, up, down, left, right. And, you know, your standard buttons there. It's a nice thin remote. We did have the batteries go dead almost immediately after we bought the TV, so we have to put new batteries in. They were Duracells, but not sure what happened there. But regardless, the remote is just pretty plain Jane. But if you look, you have your apps along the top. Now, my previous M-Series television, that was not obviously how the apps are on the TV. I could use Netflix, I could use Pandora, I could use Spotify, I could use Yahoo News, Yahoo Weather. Those are just a whole bunch of apps on the television. But the way this is set up now is you, while you do have some apps here, right, along the bottom, you have uh, Netflix, Amazon, Crackle, iHeartRadio, all the ones you saw on the remote, with some others, such as Hulu, NBC, and Haystack, Fandango, and all that. But there isn't... See, there's no option. Even if I go to access more apps, there's nothing for Pandora. There's nothing for Spotify. There's nothing for the news. And yes, I can cast that or stream that by going on my phone and simply casting to the TV. But if I just want to throw on some music real quick, I don't have that option. So I, I know it's a first world problem and probably something that some of you may not recognize, but it's something that we as a household have seen that really is kind of annoying. You know, you don't really want to get out your phone to turn on the on the music on the television to go through the radio. So that's kind of one flaw that we've seen with the television that we'd really like to see is more apps basically be on the device natively, even if we can cast and stream to it. Now, the good part with that Google Cast is that the TV comes up 
on pretty much every device that comes in the house that connects to our network because it is a Google Cast or Google um, enabled to do that. So if I want to throw something to the TV, it's very simple. To where in the past, it almost started up a new YouTube video if I wanted to, or YouTube app almost, if I wanted to watch a YouTube video from my phone. It couldn't just go directly to the app that turned on with the TV. It was kind of odd, but the one thing I do like here is with this new TV is everything is much faster, and I much, much, much faster than the old one. I'm going to turn this off right now, but in the past, just to show you an example here, but in the past, when I turned on Netflix and the TV was off, I had a, a minute wait to get to Netflix, which I know it's just a, a minute, but it was kind of annoying. So with this new TV, you actually have a completely off mode, like a low power state where the TV is off and you press Netflix and you're still going to wait a little while. But there's also a basically an instant on function for these apps that are up here. So the TV does have to be off for a little bit before this actually works properly. So I'm just going to kind of go off some time here. But it works really nicely because I can get right to Netflix within a few seconds when the TV has been off. So that's one thing we really enjoy is to have that quick access to things when we do want to use the TV. All right, the TV's been off for a little while here, so I'm going to kick on Netflix, and you can see how quickly this will start up, and I hope this hope this works properly. Let's take a look. See how quick that was? I can go right to my name, and I can go right to a video if I wanted to. So that's pretty dang quick, and that's very nice to have just when you're just using the TV. So definitely no complaints with that. I'm going to get this off before I get some copyright claim going on. So uh, number two, there is a... Uh, if I just I just clicked on Amazon, so you can see how quickly this switches to Amazon. Now, mind you, I already had uh, Netflix going, so I'm switching to Amazon, and it still has a pretty good uh, transition time. So, little little card here I'm going to drop. This is the Grand Tour. This is a replacement to uh, Top Gear that was obviously. I'm assuming if you're a subscriber of this channel, you're aware of what that is. But the Grand Tour is just a a replacement to Top Gear using the three my three favorite uh, actors in the not even actors I con con I consider them my uh, uh, what I uh, really just they're just hosts right for the automotive industry so you Richard Hammond uh, James May and Jeremy Clarkson just real great actors uh, damn it uh, great people I'm not going to consider them actors I think they're generally great people um, and I've been watching them now for probably five ten years but anyhow. Really good show. I'm going to put that out there. If you guys haven't had a chance, please watch the Grand Tour. No, I'm not getting paid by Amazon. I just think it's a great show. But regardless, come back to the video here. I had a Stinger video on this, and the Kia Stinger just looks phenomenal. The reds in the video in conjunction with the TV's dynamic range just looks exceptional. So you can really tell when you're watching 4K content with this, be crisp, and the colors look so sharp. Now, looking at the menu system real quick, guys, you can see there is a picture options. You can go through those adjustments you have extreme black engine black detail game low latency which is nice you can adjust gamma colors you can go into a full picture mode uh, color calibration with a color tuner i haven't adjusted that the speakers on this tv are turned off unfortunately i went straight to a bose surround sound that we have in the home here so i didn't actually get a chance to hear the tv's audio quality so I can't really comment on that. And you have standard timers, input settings, and system settings. But here you can see the quick start um, option or eco mode. So I leave it on quick start. I really like to have that uh, option there. And then just looking at the design of the TV real quick, I do like this bezel. This is an aluminum bezel going down the side of the TV. And then you can see in terms of thickness, it's actually thicker than our, MT, our previous M-Series TV. And the bezel is actually a little bit thicker too up here. So not really sure. I know the thickness is due to the uh, extra local dimming zones, but uh, I'm not really sure why the, the, I mean, the depth is due to that. The bezel being thicker, I'm not really sure why that is, but I'm happy that it's not too bright. Some Samsungs actually have like chrome strips along the bottom, which takes away your eye. It, your eye focuses on that sometimes when you're watching the television. Really the content that's in the center is what matters, not the bezel. But yet you do have some nice metal feed here on the TV, which really are heavy when you take it out of the package. So you can tell these are nice quality pieces. This will be mounted on the wall very soon, so you won't be seeing those, but overall the TV does look nice. So if you guys have any questions on this Vizio TV, please feel free to comment below and I'll be happy to comment back to you with my response. Uh, if this helped you out in the purchase of this TV, just press like 
And uh, finally, if you like these videos or automotive, basically for the most part, just press uh, subscribe, and I will. Uh, that way, you get notifications and my uh, videos show up on your your feed. So, all right, guys, you take care. Make it a great day, and we'll catch up soon.